dictionary is used to find the definition of words. Words are used to create sentences, and these sentences are used for us to communicate with each other. We could not communicate with each other if there aren't any words. Therefore, communication is important for our everyday life. In this session, in our moves that we do in our everyday lives, here in school, once you need to borrow the books, you must first ask the librarian and you must communicate with her. Hindi mo naman siguro pwedeng hiramin ng libro ng hindi nagpapaalam, di ba? Morning, madam. Is it possible that I can borrow this book and bring it down? Yes, of course. You may sign the book card and be sure to bring it back to her. Okay? Thank you, madam. Many students nowadays are really good at communicating with each other. They have different forms of communicating with each other, like through text, through phone calls, and through the latest internet chatting. Just like what these students are doing right now. Sometimes, students at this moment are trying to share the latest news about the, their favorite telenovelas, like, like what I watched last night. It was Coffee Prince. It was about Arthur Choi and Andy Go. I like the story. Todo na to at the highest level, yeah! That is right, but there is one thing bothering me. In communicating with others, especially in the school setting, we are using what language? Well, 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 what would you expect? Pinoy ako, kaya Tagalog ang gagamitin ko lingwahe, di ba? I know that, but we should still try to practice speaking English, because in the future it could help us. That's the problem. Students like me doesn't want English unless class ito ni Mr. Agustin, kundi maglalason siya. That's why we are here today to unveil the problems that we students are experiencing right now. Join us as we discover the factors that affect English communication among students. Hear him! The opposite falls. Oh, no.
course, the lack of command of the language is a very, very telling factor. I would venture to guess that it's not just actually the mastery of the language. It's not just the mastery of the way English is spoken, but rather the capacity of an individual to think logically. Just like in oral communication, we proceed from the argument that the ability to write rests on one's ability to think. So if you're not able to organize your thoughts, you will just end up communicating uh, or through babbling. And when we say babbling, it's putting words together that don't actually mean anything. So it's rooted in two factors here. So first is the lack of knowledge with regard to the structure of the language itself. And second is uh, the need to think logically. It's necessary to learn English, but only as a secondary language. Okay. What we should try to strengthen is mastery, let's say, in using Filipino as a medium of communication. So, for example, in this university, we try to take on a bilingual approach to education. We don't impose upon students that they should write or communicate only in English. If they want to communicate in English, fine. Okay? But if they, but we don't take it against them. At least for those who are not really adept in the language, uh, the tendency of the student is to be intimidated by, uh, for example, the eloquence of the professor or who have, or a classmate uh, who's a better speaker. So sometimes uh, the silence of students is quite telling. It's not because the student doesn't know anything. It's just because he or she could be intimidated. Those are big possibilities, especially now. Okay. Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, the problem with call center, with business process outsourcing, of which call center agencies are, are a part, is that. Uh, this is a very, very speculative sector. So right now, it's the in thing. It's very much like shawarma way back in the 1990s, wherein uh, people had that particular demand, and then once it becomes saturated, uh, it will be gone. Uh, we are very, very dependent on this without realizing that uh, other countries may be able to outpace us when it comes to what we call the comparative advantage. Right now, it's good that we have these call centers. Okay? At first, it may look that way. Now, as far as the English language is concerned, if we were to relate that, yes, the advantage is there. But what kind of English language are you trying to use there? We are actually just mimicking the English one. So call center agents are being uh, trained to speak not really in terms of improving the command of the language, of course that's important, but more of the accent so that you can mislead okay, potential callers into believing that they're not calling from the Philippines but you know, somewhere in the United States. So it becomes, well, so aside from the fact that there's not much personal growth, you tend to, the call center agent tends to alienate himself or herself from the outside world because they're trying to pretend to be somebody they're not. Okay, so we need call centers nowadays, sir. Where's your business? Call center? Mm, ano pa ba? Promising life natin ang mga Filipino yan, no? Anyway, Filipinos are the third best English-speaking people in the world. Yes, that's right. The point I want to know is if call centers affect the uh, communication skills. Pwede ba? English po ang hindi sila. So, affected na talaga ang mga communicating skills nila. Like the trainings and seminars, right? Of course you're right. You are asking, you are asking, um, wait, um, uh, you are asking on what affects communicating skills to call center, right? So, come on, let's go. Let's go. Go! Today in Perverges, and I'm going to be interviewing a call center agent. So come join me.
Well, um, I would say that one of the uh, things that um, I find for this job is the knowledge of the uh, word, how I can uh, manipulate the uh, English language and also the, uh, um, with training, I'm sure that um, I think it's about um because without skills and without knowledge, I think um no one would survive in this Yeah, speaking English, well because uh, as I know there's no call center like um that um that's not requiring their agents to speak in English, even on um, outbound or outsourcing mm -hmm. call centers. They are also required to speak Having interviewed two different persons, let us see the factors that affect English communication. Of course, the lack of command of the language is a very, very telling factor. And I would attribute it at the basic uh, level. Uh, when we say basic, we refer to elementary and high school education. Uh, I would venture to guess that it's not just actually the mastery of the language, it's not just the mastery of the way English is spoken, but rather the capacity of an individual to think logically. Yes, I think the greatest factor is the environment or the surroundings. Because uh, among the college students I've noticed, and based on my experience as well, um, they're not practicing English because um, their friends or their teachers are also not um, speaking in English. Now, um, if you really want to have better um, command of the English language. I think it's better for practice.
immediate and long-term solutions that, that uh, we can consider. The irony here is if you want to strengthen the English language, you don't make it the primary medium of instruction, but rather try to treat English as a secondary language. We have to equip students with the necessary skills and knowledge for them to think critically. So that's the basic factor to consider. If we want to ensure respectable command of the language, whether it's Filipino or English, critical thinking is very, very important. I think that students should be able to learn how to organize their thoughts. And they can better organize their thoughts if they have thoughts to begin with. Okay? That's one. Second, in the long term, I think uh, students should be encouraged to learn education, uh, to be educated within the con uh, beyond the confines of the classroom. Uh, here in the university, we have a saying that we should not let our academics get in the way of our education. So we should encourage students to get out to learn more about their immediate environment so that they would be able to think more critically and that uh, they don't just confine learnings in books. Books are very important as well as other references, but exposure to the outside world, I think, uh, would be paramount in terms of how they, could, they can better organize their thoughts. I think that's a, a main prerequisite to learning the language. So that's the basic idea here. If you want to strengthen English, then you try to prioritize in terms of what you should be teaching to students. And in order to, inf to input more thoughts and more lessons to the students, uh, the teacher should be able to communicate in a language that uh, students are more comfortable with. So the Department of Education and the Commission on Higher Education should do to improve English. Forget about imposing English as the medium of instruction. It's very, very counterproductive, not only to the development of the nation, but also to the development of the critical mind of uh, our students. Because using a foreign language would deprive students of learning experiences, of better communication with other people. So the government should forget about it. Okay? But then again, you will counter-argue, does this particular government want to foster critical thinking among people? So again, that's another factor. We can say that one of the reasons the government wants to use English as a medium of instruction is to remove critical thinking altogether. If you look at the basic economic reforms that are being done uh, at the elementary and high school levels, as, as early as 2002, you would know that uh, from nine subjects, it has been reduced to only five. English, Science, Mathematics, Filipino, and a hodgepodge of subjects called Makabaya. Okay? So, it's just, so what we have now is a basic educational system that uh, deprives students of critical thinking. It's only a kind of public education system wherein uh, the government wants to justify its low priority for education. So it's very, very unfortunate. And even prior to that declaration of President Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo during the 75th anniversary of the Far Eastern University, where she trumpeted the need for English as a, as a primary medium of instruction, she was already biased for the English language because at the grade one and grade two levels, she wanted to teach science using the English language. So as early as grade 1 and grade 2, uh, she wanted students to be acclimatized to learning through the English language. So again, as I said, it's very, very telling of the kind of educational system the government wants. Because if you want to foster critical thinking, uh, what the government should do would be to promote the national uh, Filipino as a national language. But it has chosen to tread the more dangerous path of promoting English instead. To learn the English language. If you want to learn the English language, then you are encouraged to do so. That's part of your freedom. 
But what we should do would be to resist all moves by any government agency to impose upon students learning course, various courses using the English language. I feel that people, uh, students are better off learning, let's say, mathematics, the sciences, or even uh, various disciplines under social science to Filipino. Because I think that, that uh, students are more equipped with uh, communicate in terms of communicating thoughts using the Philippine language. Uh, they are not intimidated in any way. The problem with English is that you have to do two things. First, how do you construct your sentences, your paragraphs, so that they, they become coherent. Second, what do you say? The advantage with the national language is that with Filipino as a language of instruction is that you're more comfortable communicating your thoughts. You don't need to go through the first process of, work, of uh, constructing your sentences. Because if you would notice, people speak the language they're familiar with more naturally. They're quite comfortable. They have a certain degree of confidence. So the only problem that, that uh, you have to contend with would be putting the content. Okay, packaging the content so that it becomes more understandable. So I think that it's necessary to learn the national language first before you actually venture into other languages like English. As I said, treat English as a secondary language. You may want to learn it, but you have to master first the nuances of the Filipino language. Try and practice thinking English. That's the key because um, okay. you know, if you think in Tagalog or think in vernacular language, you'll also speak in Tagalog. But if you think in English, okay, um, it will come out. Okay, but um, don't just translate Tagalog to English because it will come out wrong. So what we don't want that. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's that's anything. And also try try to write with what's on your mind. Write it down, write it down, and then down. Zareen, there are factors that really affect the English communication skills of all the circles. Among the basic foundation of education and with their environment. Yes, of course, I agree with you. With all these factors, it's a solution. Like Sir Arrow said, think English as a secondary language. He also said that students should be educated. And of course, by reading books. At base din sa sinabi ni Gilbert, we could practice speaking English during discussions like talking. We shouldn't be shy and learn to speak English. Siyempre, importante din naman ang correct pronunciation, no? As we go on with the show, we will learn more about communication. So, watch out for our next episode of Public Speaking! This is Jester Carl Rodriguez. And this is Arima Pano in The Opposite Pose.
Oh, are you sure you wanna end it all, my love? Do you really need more time to think about your life? Do you really wanna read the same old book? Do you really want? Words.